welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new this is miss harris and in today's lesson we're going to be estimating non-perfect squares so in the last lesson we all had to complete a perfect squares table that gave us the side length what that looks like under the radical, what it looks like when you're writing it, as if you're going to take the square root and what the actual square root of the number is. So for a first example, we're gonna look at a square that has an area of 18 units. So the first thing we want to find is what two whole numbers the square root of 18 or radical 18 lie between. So if we look back at our square root chart or we think back to the perfect squares that we know, we know that radical 18 is going to be between radical 16 and radical 25. Now we have to know what these radicals are because in order for us to tell what two whole numbers they lie between, we have to take the square root of those two perfect squares that we know. So we know that radical 18, because it lies between radical 16 and radical 25, that means when we actually find what the square root of 18 is, it's going to be somewhere between four and five. So now let's put this on a number line. We know that radical 16 is gonna be on the lower end of our number line, and we need to get all the way up to radical 25. I know my lines aren't perfectly spaced, but you get the gist, right? You get the gist. And then radical 18 would be right about here, right? Because it's two units up from radical 16. So we've taken care of step one. We know that when we find the square root of 18, it's gonna be somewhere between four and five. And on our number line, it looks like it's gonna be a lot closer to the square root of 16 or it's gonna be a lot closer to four when we actually take the square root of 18. So for step three, we need to find the distance between our areas and then divide. So let me explain what that means and I'm gonna use my number line to actually demonstrate that. So we know that to get from radical 16 to radical 18, we're going up two units. And then the entire distance that we have between radical 16 and radical 25 is nine units. So I found the distance between my two areas, which is two over nine, and I'm actually gonna divide that. So if I plug this into the calculator and I do two divided by nine, I get 0 0.2. So that's the important number that I need and I'm rounding to the 10th because when we actually do our estimate, we're estimating to the nearest 10th. So only one decimal place for these problems that we're doing. So now that I've found that, I'm gonna put all of this information together. If I'm estimating the square root of 18, I know it's somewhere between four and five. So it's gonna be greater than four, but it's gonna be less than five. So I know that my whole number is gonna be four. Now my decimal is gonna be what we found in step three, which when we found the distance between those areas and then divided, that is our decimal. So when we calculated this, our estimate is that the square root of 18 is about 4.2. If you go ahead and plug that in your calculator right now, you're gonna see that the square root of 18 is 4.24 which if we round that to the nearest tenth gives us 4.2 so our estimate was spot on now we're going to try another example this example is similar to the last one but we're going to be looking for a different non-perfect square so we want to know what the side length of a square with the area of eight units would be if the area is eight units that means when we take the square root of it it'll give us what the side length of that square would be. But because it's not a perfect square, it's not going to be a whole number, so we need to estimate what this solution would be. So we're looking for the square root of eight, or radical eight. We first need to figure out what the perfect square smaller than this would be, and what the perfect square larger than this would be, the ones that are immediately around it. So for our lower perfect square, 
we have radical 4. And for our larger perfect square, we have radical 9. So when we actually take the square root of these, we find that the square root of 8 is going to be between 2 and 3. On our number line, we need to account for everything from radical 4 all the way up to radical 9 and make sure that we put radical 8 on there in its appropriate spot. If I were to guesstimate in my head what this square root would be, I'm going to ask myself, is it going to be closer to 2 or is it going to be closer to 3? In this case, it's going to be closer to 3. So I'm going to have some number that when I actually do my estimate is going to be closer to the high end over two and a half when we actually do all of this work. Now for step three, I'm going to use my number line again to help me find those distances. So I'm going to be doing eight minus four and dividing that by nine minus four or just finding the difference between my lower perfect square and my non-perfect square, which is four units. And then the difference between my lower perfect square and my higher perfect square, which is five units. When I plug this into a calculator, four divided by five is going to give me 0 0.8. So when I estimate this perfect square, I know it's going to be two point something because it's between two and three. So the square root of eight is approximately 2.8 because I know it's going to be between two and three. So I'm going to take that lower perfect square number and then add to that the decimal that I got in step three. So that's it for today's video. I hope you guys found it helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you guys next time.